we will see uh, which are the types of cloning vectors usually used for genetic engineering experiments they are the following that is plasmids phages cosmids phagemids bacterial artificial chromosomes or bacs yeast artificial chromosomes or yacs and viruses so these are the different types of cloning vectors so first the plasmids plasmids have a cloning limit of 0.1 to 10 kilo bases what do you mean by cloning limit cloning limit is the uh, size of foreign dna that a plasmid can carry the capacity of a vector or uh, the capacity with which it can carry uh, a foreign dna or the uh, size range of foreign dna that can be carried in a vector that is called as cloning limit for a plasmid it is 0.1 to 10 kilo bases in phages it is 8 to 20 kilo ba uh, bases phage is a virus that infects a bacterial cell phage refers to bacteriophage so it has got the ability to integrate its own dna to a bacterial host cell so this property of it is being used as a vector because it has the ability to integrate into a host cell so this property makes it uh, suitable as a vector then the cosmids cosmids are actually derived they are uh, hybrids of plasmids as well as phage dna similarly phagemids are also hybrids which contain phage dna and plasmid dna so they are all artificially synthesized then the bacterial artificial chromosomes are those uh, which can be used as vectors both uh, in bacterial host cells as well as yeast cells so you can use them as vectors for transferring foreign genes into bacterial cells as well as yeast cells and their cloning limit is 75 to 300 kilo bases then yeast artificial chromosomes are specifically designed for yeast host cells and their cloning limit is higher that is 100 to 1000 kilo bases and there are many plant viruses and animal viruses which are also used as vectors to transfer foreign genes into host cells so when we take into account the cloning limit we can see that the plasmids are having the lowest capacity when you go higher that is the phage is having 80 to 20 kilo base cloning limit cosmids are having still higher 35 to 50 kilo bases phagemids 30 again 35 to 50 kilo bases bacterial artificial chromosomes have a higher cloning limit than these uh, hybrid cosmids or phagemids it is about 75 to 300 kilo bases and yeast artificial chromosomes are having 100 to 1000 kilo bases so these are the different types of cloning vectors used and uh, when we take the case of a plasmid plasmids are a small circular dna molecules they are double stranded and they are covalently closed unlike any uh, eukaryotic uh, genome unlike any eukaryotic genomic dna which is linear or the bacterial genome itself which is linear uh, that means which is cut at both ends which is open at both ends unlike these uh, gene uh, these types of dna found in the genome of many organisms the plasmids are closed they are circular but double stranded dna molecules so they are covalently closed double stranded circular dna molecules which are smaller than uh, any genome uh, smaller than the genome of a bacterium they are uh, seen as super coiled structures and the most important property is they are extra chromosomal what do you mean by extra chromosomal they are seen as extra genetic material apart from the genome of the host cell which contains them so they are plasmids they are naturally occurring small double stranded extra chromosomal circular and covalently closed super coiled dna molecules they have the ability to replicate autonomously inside the bacterial cell so one of the properties of the vector is meet, met here that is they are able to replicate themselves independent of the replication of the bacterial cell so they are usually found in bacterial cells they may not contain vital genes which will uh, allow the bacteria for their growth or reproduction but they carry genes which confer special properties to the bacterial cells such as antibiotic resistance nitrogen fixation etc so they give selective advantage for the 
cells which carry them. That is uh, when bacteria contain plasmids that carry genes for antibiotic resistance. Even in the presence of that antibiotic in the medium, the bacterium will be able to grow. If there is no such plasmid, the pl bacterium will be killed in the presence of the antibiotic. So, such special properties are conferred to bacteria with the help of genes which are located in the plasmids. There are different types of plasmids. They may be single copy or multi copy. Single copy means there will be only one copy of that plasmid inside the bacterial cell. Multi copy means there may be 20 or 10 or even 1000 copies of a particular plasmid inside the same cell. And to be used as vectors, usually multi copy plasmids are used, which can maintain higher copies of them inside the bacterial cell. The plasmids are uh, common in prokaryotic cells like bacteria, but in certain cases they are found in yeast cells that is Saccharomyces cerevisiae also contain plasmids. Otherwise, they are uh, the signature uh, DNA molecules which are present in prokaryotic cells. They benefit the survival of the organism. Uh, they give antibiotic resistance. They help nitrogen fixation. They will code for, they will contain genes which code for uh, virulence factors which give them the property of virulence. They also, there are also genes in plasmids which help uh, the transfer of that same plasmid to other cells during the process known as conjugation. Conjugation is a type of primitive uh, gene exchange or DNA exchange in bacterial cells. It can be considered to be the primitive type of sexual reproduction. So, that is a kind of genetic exchange and uh, usually plasmids are exchanged through this uh, process and uh, the plasmids which are exchanged by this process are called as F plasmids. It is actually a transfer of a plasmid from one bacterial cell to the other and the plasmids which are getting transferred are called as F plasmids because they contain certain genes which enable them to be transferred to other cells during conjugation. So, these are some of the properties um, which are conferred by genes present in plasmids but they are not of much importance when we use them as vectors. Only the property of antibiotic resistance will be important because they can be used as markers further. Now, there are two types of plasmids that is conjugative plasmids and non-conjugative plasmids. Conjugated plasmids contain certain sequences which are called as tra and mob sequences. So, they are auto transmissible that means they are transmissible to other host cells also other cells also. But non-conjugative plasmids are non they, they are not self transmissible. So, to be used as a vector, uh, we have to take a precaution that they should not get transmitted to other cells without our monitoring. So, we have to use non self transmissible plasmids as vectors. So, we prefer the non conjugative plasmids as ideal vectors. We do not use conjugative plasmids as vectors because beyond our control they may pass to other cells that we cannot allow because we are using them only as a vehicle for carrying our foreign DNA to a host cell when especially it is a bacterial cell. And the most important thing to be mentioned about the plasmid is that we are using a plasmid as a vector when we want to carry a foreign gene into a bacterial host cell. So, that is very important. So, what we do is we will connect our foreign gene with the plasmid. So, foreign gene is cut with the restriction enzyme. It is linked to a cut vector or a plasmid and we get a new DNA which is called as a recombinant DNA which will contain the vector DNA as well as the foreign DNA and then we transfer it into a bacterial host cell. And the commonly used plasmids are PBR322 which is an artificial cloning vector which was uh, uh, developed by uh, two uh, scientists that is Bolivar and Rodriguez in 1977 in the University of California. Uh, and uh, they are considered to be ideal plasmid vectors because they contain ORI, the origin of replication. They have got ampicillin resistance gene as well as tetracycline resistance gene which help them uh, uh, identifiable as markers 
ampicillin resistance gene and tetracycline resistance gene in these plasmids they help us to identify whether the host cell is containing these plasmids and whether these plasmids are carrying foreign dna or not and these plasmids also contain pbr322 also contains a lot of uh, cutting sites for different types of restriction enzymes so that we extract a foreign dna using any restriction enzyme we will be able to link it at that place at that place of the plasmid so another important plasmid vector is puc19 so that is also an artificial vector which was developed in the university of california which gives it the name puc19 where p stands for plasmid u for university of Cali university and c california and here also the working is the same but screening is slightly different so that is regarding the use of plasmids as vectors next the phage vectors the phages are viruses which infect bacterial cells and they inject their genetic material into the host cell and this genetic material can be either rna or dna they have got a cloning limit which is higher than the plasmids and uh, these uh, phages they uh, follow two pathways inside bacterial cells one pathway is called as the lysogenic pathway where the phage dna becomes part of the bacterial genome and it remains hidden inside the bacterial genome and it is replicated along with the bacterial genome in that stage we call it as a prophase it is in a silent state it remains integrated in the bacterial genome until it enters into the lytic pathway so the first pathway is called as lysogenic pathway where it remains as a prophase within the bacterial dna what is lytic pathway in lytic pathway the prophase will dissociate from the bacterial genome and it starts replicating inside the host cell it will start expressing inside the host cell and it will start large scale production of bacteriophage particles which will finally lead to the filling up of the host bacterial cell with lots of bacteriophage particles and finally the host cell will get lysed and these bacteriophage particles will be released and they will get into new host cells so these two are the pathways which are followed by bacteriophages so if our aim is to produce larger number of our foreign dna or if our aim is to produce or uh, uh, is to clone our foreign dna in large numbers uh, it is uh, designed to be in such a way that the phage vector is to be designed in such a way that it goes into the lytic cycle so that number of particles will be produced all which contain our foreign dna because we are what we are doing when we use them as vectors is that we will remove a part of their dna we will remove a part of the phage dna instead we will incorporate foreign dna into that part and we then package them into an empty uh, viral particle and we allow this virus to enter into the host cell so uh, this virus which we have now uh, produced is having our foreign dna in place of some of the viral genes and this virus is allowed to enter into the bacterial cell and inside the bacterial cell they will integrate the host uh, or the foreign uh, gene into the bacterial genome and if, if it is following the lytic cycle so as much as viral particles are produced there will be as much number of our foreign gene cloned so the advantage of using a phage as a vector is that it is having a higher cloning capacity than a plasmid but there are some drawbacks the capsid the si the bacteriophage has got an outer covering which is called as capsid so sometimes this capsid will limit the size of the foreign dna that can be incorporated into it and sometimes if the foreign dna is longer longer the phages fail to function efficiently so they are some of the drawbacks but still they are used as vectors and the commonly used phage vectors are phage lambda and m13 phage vectors 
The next type of vectors are called cosmids. Cosmid is a hybrid vector which contains a plasmid sequence as well as a lambda phage sequence. That means we are linking the part of a plasmid with a part of phage vector. So, lambda phage, lambda phage is the bacteriophage. So, we are taking a part of lambda phage linking it with the plasmid and designing a new artificial vector that is what is called as a cosmid. So, the DNA sequences are originally taken from the lambda phage and they are first described by 19, uh, Collins and Horn in 1978 and the advantage is that they can carry uh, larger sizes of DNA that is around 37 to 52 kilobases of DNA foreign DNA can be carried by them. So, uh, how, why do we make such hybrids? Because we want to exploit the properties of both the plasmid as well as phage. They can replicate like plasmids because they have got an ori which is suitable for plasmid. They also have antibiotic resistance genes that is also part of a plasmid. So, they can be used as markers. So, we will be able to uh, recognize cells which did not take up the cosmid because uh, they contain the antibiotic resistance gene. So, um, after all the experiment, if the cells are uh, not uh, growing in and uh, if the cells are growing in antibiotic, that means that they contain the antibiotic resistance gene, they contain the vector and we can make sure that the vector has entered into the host cell. So, uh, some of these properties of plasmids are used in a cosmid when we use it as a vector that is their ability to replicate and uh, second is uh, the presence of antibiotic resistance genes which help them uh, used as markers and they have also got uh, restriction sites for cutting enzymes and uh, some of the genes of the lambda will be deleted uh, but a sequence will be retained which is called as the cos sequence. So, cos sequence will allow the vector to be remained uh, in the circular form inside the bacterial cell. So, that is why we use it as a uh, vector uh, that is why we use the cos sequences. So, because of the presence of cos sequences they can circularize when they are inside the bacterial cell. But if we want to package them into phage heads, they should be linear. So, we can cut them also. The cos sequences allow the cosmids to remain in linear form when they are packaged inside the phage head or in circular form when they are inside the bacterial cell. So, inside the bacterial cell, they will act like plasmids and inside the phage head, they will act like uh, the phage uh, genetic material. So, uh, that makes them flexible vectors, versatile vectors. So, they can be packaged, these vectors can be packaged inside the empty codes of phages and uh, they are allowed to uh, enter into host cells by transduction and once inside the host cell, the cause sequences which are also called the cohesive ends allow them to undergo circularization inside the bacterial cell. So, advantages are natural uh, phage DNA uh, will not have an antibiotic resistance gene, but this plasmid part is having antibiotic resistance gene. So, it will act as the marker. Second is it has got ori of a plasmid. So, uh, because of this it can behave like a plasmid inside the host bacterial cell. Third one is uh, cutting by restriction enzymes. The plasmid part helps cutting of the vector with the help of the commonly used restriction enzymes. So, these are the uh, advantages which the cosmid gets as a vector because of the plasmid part in it. Now, what does the phage part allow? The most important attractive property of the phage part is that it will allow the foreign DNA to be inserted into the host cell through a natural process that is transduction by the phage lambda infection machinery because 
it will behave like a bacteriophage though it contains plasmid dna so we will just allow the bacteriophage to infect the bacterial cell so easily this dna will get into the bacterial cell we need not require other procedures other protocols to make the vector enter into the host cell usually um, it is not easy to make a plasmid enter into a host bacterial cell but if it is in the form of a phage the advantage is that it will by itself enter into the bacterial cell through its infection machinery so the phage part allows the transduction of the vector by the lambda phage infection machinery and once when we design a cosmid we will remove the genes for viral proteins so there is no threat of production of a viral particle inside a host cell and there will be no lysis of the host cells so these are the advantages of using the uh, cosmids as vectors these phagemids are also hybrids of plasmids as well as uh, the uh, phage uh, vectors that means uh, the phage dna as well as plasmid dna has been hybridized to form artificial vectors which are called as phagemids so uh, they can have the replicative powers of both plasmids and phages uh, and they can replicate non lytically that means without killing the bacterial cell like a plasmid or they can even behave uh, like a phage by lysing of the bacterial cell so in two ways they will be able to behave so they behave as plasmids as well as phages or as prophages so that is why we use the phagemids and they have helped to overcome the size limitation problem of conventional phage vector systems